Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the latest Backing Brentwood Business webinar brought to you by Brentwood Chamber of Commerce, Brentwood Business Partnership and Brentwood Borough Council. My name's Colin Barber, and it's my pleasure to host today's video uh, where we're joined by Tom Pryor from ST Extreme Cleaning. And I'll be introducing you to Tom in just a few minutes time. But first of all, just like to welcome all of you and thank you very much for joining us today. And just to point out to you that uh, uh, if you do want to see this video again, or if you have to leave before the end of the video, then there is the opportunity to watch it later on on YouTube, and we'll be sending you details of that shortly. This is the latest in a series of webinars which we've been running on behalf of the, uh, the three organisations, Brentwood Borough Council, as I say, the Chamber of Commerce and Brentwood Business Partnership, and all the previous webinars are available to view on our website. We're running them at the moment uh, twice a week. Um, probably moving into June, we'll be running them on a weekly, biz a weekly basis. And the idea of the webinars is to help you, the businesses in Brentwood, to uh, manage, your, manage your businesses through these difficult times. So thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoy it. And most importantly of all, if you have any questions for Tom, then do feel free to uh, send in questions during the webinar. Um, those who aren't familiar with Zoom, if you just look probably at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a menu bar and one of the menu buttons is Q&A. If you'd like to type in any questions which you have, then at the end of the webinar, I'll be happy to put them to Tom and I'm sure Tom will be happy to answer them on your behalf. Uh, just to confirm, this webinar is being recorded, so uh, there will be a chance for you to watch it uh, later on. So let me introduce you to our uh, guest today, Tom Pryor from ST Extreme Cleaning. Are you there, Tom? Hi, Colin, good morning. Hi, good morning to Tom, and very welcome. And uh, we're looking forward to hearing all about your uh, uh, very topical subject of keeping your workplace clean. Yes, indeed. So, Tom, just tell us a little bit, first of all, about ST Extreme Cleaning. Yeah, sure. So, um, ST Extreme Cleaning, we're a commercial cleaning company based here in Brentwood. Uh, I'm co-owner, so um, the S in our title is Sam. That's my sister, my twin sister, and the T is obviously myself. Um, Sam has the wealth of experience in the commercial cleaning sector, um, over 13 years experience. I myself am a bit of a newcomer, um, so my previous life was uh, in banking. Uh, I did that for nearly 20 years. Um, faced with redundancy last year, uh, early last year, and had to do something different. Um, and we kind of, as twins, we see each other a lot. We, we get on fairly well. We knocked our heads together and we decided that um, actually it was time for, for me to do my own thing and, and, and Sam's obviously coming along with that as well. Um, so basically the type of sectors that we clean in and we, we target um, our schools, retail, um, construction where we have, that's the, the wealth of our experiences in the construction sector, um, you know, financial, hospitals and care homes. Um, we provide all kinds of cleaning service as well. So you've got your kind of general cleaning, uh, weekly, nightly, um, and then you also have kind of like more your, your one-off deeper clean. Uh, yeah, that, so that's a little bit about us and that's a, a small introduction. Right, okay, that's great Tom. So you're gonna tell us all about a safe, clean workplace. And uh, I know you've got a, a slide presentation which I'm gonna run for you. So uh, uh, let me bring up the first slide and uh, over to you. Lovely. Thanks again, Colin. Um, right. OK, so you should now see in front of you uh, a quick overview for today's webinar. Um, I thought I would just quickly share this with you. Um, you know, for, for maybe just you want to have a quick look, see what we're going to talk about. And actually, if it's not of interest or I'm not going to talk about something that you thought I would, then it gives you a chance to duck off now early and, and kind of save 25 to 30 minutes of your life. You won't get back. Um, right. OK, so quick overview. Um, we're going to go through some best practices for employers. Um, it's just a few ideas, thought generation around what you guys should be doing to keep your staff safe. Uh, then we're going to move on to actually your employees. Um, just again, some quick ideas about how you keep your immediate workstation safe, your safe, and also how you keep your colleagues safe by doing that also. Um, next up, we're going to do a quick section on fogging. Um, now, this is quite topical at the moment. Um, it's something that's probably going to be new to you. It's probably, you're thinking, well, what is that? Um, I'm just going to give you a few pointers because there's a lot of companies now offering it. Um, 
it is it's good in many ways, but there's also a couple of drawbacks that I'd like to kind of um, bring your attention to. Uh, that will then lead, and you'll see as I do the presentation, that will then lead naturally into um, probiotics. So probiotics is a uh, cleaning product um, that I want to talk more about because I think it's really, really important. Um, and I've actually, I've got to apologise right here, I've put the future of cleaning. Um, but in fact, there should be a question mark after that because I'm going to put a few pointers to you. Um, and then it's up to you whether you decide you think, yes, it is the future of cleaning. Um, at ST Extreme Cleaning, we're, we're firmly behind this product. Um, and as you can see, the next slide naturally leads into, we've got a long list of environmental benefits uh, as to why you should be using probiotics. Um, finally, I'll do a slide on just some useful sources of information and then hopefully time permits, we'll have a quick Q&A. So, uh, if you wouldn't mind rolling to the next slide, please, Colin. Um, you'll see here best practice for employers. Um, gosh, you business owners, um, you have a million and one problems already um, and now all of a sudden you're faced with this and uh, I don't. I hate to generalise because maybe not all of you are like this, but cleaning, I think for most people, is probably something that went on. You don't really need to know that much about it. You just need to know that it happens, it's good, and it's effective. Um, well, I think the current environment now means that you are going to have to kind of get hold of what's going on in your office. If you're an employer, you need to look at the current routine. Talk to your cleaner or cleaners and get a real understanding for what they're doing. Are they cleaning the, the, the points that are absolutely necessary, the high touch points in your office? Um, you should also look into various cleaning courses, I think. So we don't all have the luxury um, of being able to have cleaners in every night. I understand businesses are, are varying sizes. Um, and for a lot of you, you probably maybe just employ a cleaner to come in maybe once a week um, and you pay them a little bit of cash. Perfectly reasonable and understandable. Um, but in this current environment, I would probably look at maybe just educating that cleaner a bit more. They might not need educating, of course, but have they had any kind of formal education around infection control? Uh, no. OK, look, you do a great job for us. You know, reassure them you do a really good job for us in a very difficult time. I, we would just like to invest in you a little bit of money. Um, they're not that expensive. They range in price, um, but you can get some really good online infection control courses from 25 quid. Um, just something to think about. I put here, um, now I haven't, a lot of points that you put down, you kind of tend to, to read and you adjust them to kind of become your own. Uh, but this one I haven't read anything about and I'm just kind of throwing it out there dedicated member of staff trained in infection control. Um, maybe it's something to look at. I mean, we have fire marshals. Fire marshals are very important, immediate risk to life. Um, maybe we should have one dedicated member of staff looking at infection control and making sure best practice within your environment. They can take a little bit of responsibility for that. Um, a number of companies that we do general cleans for, they're, they're starting to kind of look at how they get back safely to the office. Um, and a lot of them seem to be adopting from when we speak to them, like a, a 30 to 50% ratio of, of staff coming back in. Um, and if you've got quite a vast office, then kind of isolating them so that you can keep within the two meters um, is gonna be a lot easier. Um, and maybe you can miss a desk out you know, basic things like that in order to <clears throat> adhere to those rules. Um, but actually, if you can't, then maybe like supermarkets have done now when you pay for your shopping, maybe you should look at getting some Perspex screens in between your desks um, and, you know, make that part of the cleaning routine. Um, you know, whether it's nightly or weekly, you know, say to your cleaners, make sure these Perspex screens are cleaned thoroughly. Um, I think another thing that's really important is enforce a clear desk policy. Um, I say that, I mean, the irony, if you saw the desk that I used to work at uh, in my previous life, um, it, was, it was never, ever clear. Um, but I think in these times, it's good practice. Make sure they clear their desk and then the appropriate cleaning can take place. Um, 
consider regular deep cleans as well. Um, only you, when you speak to your staff, will kind of get an idea for how regularly you think this, these should take place. I would say consult them on it. There's going to be a lot of nervous people, you know, returning to the office. And I, I would just say sit down, consult with them and say, what's reasonable here? We don't need a deep clean every night. We don't need one every week. But is maybe a quarterly deep clean reasonable? I think so. Um, again, I, I mentioned this to start with, but can you minimise touch points within your office? Um, you know, the stationary cupboard. Everyone goes in and kind of helps themselves. OK, let's just have one dedicated person who is allowed in the stationary cupboard and allowed to touch things. Um, it might be even something as trivial as uh, if you've got a TV in your office, um, you know, only one person uses the TV remote. They can change it. No one else. Um, and I, I think this one's quite basic, really. Just try to ventilate the premises as much as possible. Uh, yeah, next slide, please, Colin. Um, so best practice for employees. Um, if possible, only touch your immediate workstation. I know that that is not going to be possible in a lot of businesses. Um, but if you are, if you do work at a desk, you know, keep yourself to your desk. Only touch your workstation. Don't go touching other colleagues' workstations as well. Uh, this one's really going to be important as well. Just raise any concerns. I touched on this when it came to the previous slide, but just make sure that any concerns you have, tell your manager or your facilities manager, talk it through with them. Um, do not sit there worrying about it. There, there will be a lot of people that worry. Um, Similarly, there'll be people that are, are probably quite blasé about it and, and, and won't worry as much, but there will be those people and those people that do, just make sure any concerns you have around your cleaning, talk to your manager. Um, one of our clients put this, this next procedure in really quickly, actually, um, before lockdown even. Don't share kitchen equipment. Um, I'm sure many of you, I'm very territorial about the mug that I drink out of. Um, I've caught my wife drinking out of it a couple of times. It's it's not good. It's mine. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of you are like that as well. Um, however, if you have a communal kitchen area, some people aren't that territorial and they'll use, you know, whatever mug comes out of the comes out of the cupboard first. Um, I think you have your dedicated mugs. I mean, even like I was saying, the client um, that we clean for they actually separated out. So they gave all their employees kind of like a little compartment and they put their mugs and their cutlery in it. And they actually also said to them, uh, once you've eaten, once you've drunk, when you go back to the kitchen, please wash it up then and there. Um, and also actually that saved us a bit of time. So that might be a little tip to employers as well. Um, the time that we saved having to wash up each night, you know, 20, 25 minutes, we could then dedicate to uh, fully wiping all of the high touch points within the office. Um, so that didn't actually end up costing them any more money in cleaning. Uh, some kind of helpful little tips like that. Try, try and have a think about things like that. Um, become more responsible for your own workspace. Um, maybe you get into, like I said, we're not all fortunate enough to have the premises cleaned every night. If you're one of those and you're not, get into the habit of cleaning your works, uh, clearing your workspace down and then wiping the high touch points, you know, the phone, the desk, the keyboard, um, probably the, should have put the mouse on there, that's probably the thing you touch the most. Uh, and again, uh, if you sit next to a window and you don't mind it being open, open it, you know, get some ventilation through. Okay, uh, now moving on to fogging. Um, lovely, thanks Colin. Uh, fogging. What is it? Um, a lot of you won't have heard of this. Um, it's done. It's done a lot in uh, other countries, uh, mainly for to um, protect their crops. You, you see them spraying them, um, you know, to, to keep away insects. Um, but it's a technique that's been obviously used in buildings for a long time as well. Um, it's very safe because there's lots of procedures around it that make it safe. Um, but I just wanted to give you a quick overview of what it is. So, fogging involves a very fine chemical, which is a disinfectant, and it's misted into an entire area or room. Um, why do people choose fogging? It's because it covers everything. Uh, the droplets are so tiny that are produced. 
it literally spreads everywhere within the room and it gets all the areas that could potentially be missed. Um, the, so the detergent, it just kills viruses and bacteria on contact. Now there's two main types of fogging. There's thermal and there's ULV cold. Um, I'm pretty sure 99.9% .9 of you will not have thermal fogging. Um, that's a technique that's used uh, normally if, you, if there's been a fire. Um, that's the kind of, uh, uh, you, you'll, you'll use that method. But for uh, cleaning your offices, it will be a ULV cold fogger. So what happens? Uh, a company will come in um, and they will undertake a deep clean first, um, just trying to remove any, any soil areas, you know, um, uh, excess dust. And the reason that they do that, and the reason they wipe over all the high touch points first, is because they want that initial clean surface so that the disinfectant can then settle on there. It's not gonna work if it has to then settle on something and start battling through that initially. Um, so that's kind of the procedure. Some uh, company will come in, they'll perform a deep clean, all of the touch points, um, and then finally they'll commence with the fogging. Um, now, the actual fogging uh, time-wise will vary on how, uh, how large your premises are. Um, but what generally tends to be the case is you have to completely clear the area um, and then they will conduct the fogging and once it's done, they've tested it, it's safe to re-enter um, one hour after the treatment generally. There are some other um, techniques and uh, different chemicals that are put in. So if, you're, if you choose a company that uses hydrogen peroxide, um, you won't be able to enter the premises again for four hours afterwards. Um, companies, once they've bogged, uh, they will do a QAT and QAC test. That just stands for a quality assurance control or quality assurance testing. Um, what these are is these are little test strips. Um, the first one, when before you fog the room, you put one of the test strips in the far corner on the ceiling, you will then fog the room and you will then check to make sure that you have got to the correct level uh, of chemical that's needed. Um, after this, as an operative, they will vacate the room and then 10 minutes before uh, the hour's up, they will go back in, they'll put a new test strip in the room and they will check that the chemical is no longer in the air, or, it's, or it's, it will be in the air, but it will be at a safe level for people to return. Um, now this next part here, uh, this EN product number, um, this is quite important. And it's important because if you're gonna get someone into fog, you really want to pay attention to those first, uh, one, two, three, four, five numbers there. So the 14476. So this is an EN product number, which means it's been tested in a lab and it's tested and proven to kill SARS-CoV-2, which is, um, as you probably all know, that's what sits on surfaces. It then becomes um, corona or COVID once it enters your system. Um, so that's maybe just a, a helpful little pointer there that, you know, if, you, if you're looking at company coming in, just make sure they are using the proper disinfectant. Um, now, kind of moving on from this, it's important to note that fogging should not be overused. It's, I mean, it is extreme. It, it disrupts a room's microbial um, and it's, it kills everything. And this is what you've got to kind of be wary of. There's good bacteria and there's bad bacteria. Um, and when you fog a room, you totally reset it. So you kill a lot of good as well. Um, that's something that you need to be aware of really and these kind of harmful chemicals there's lots of knock-on effects of this and really now you're going to kind of we're going to move on to probiotics and hopefully you're just going to learn a little bit more about why it's important that we look at different cleaning methods and sorry I should have explained the link here is obviously that when you fog um, it, it does kill, you know, 99.9% .9 of bacteria, but you've got to be careful because there might be that 0.01% that's left. And that 0.01% that's left, if it's dangerous, if it's a pathogen, 
uh, then it really, really is dangerous. That's kind of how you can then lead on to uh, superbugs because you can't kill it. So lots and lots of cleaning going on now with COVID and lots and lots of disinfectant. Um, and we need to be really careful because that can lead um, to bacterial infections um, and they are on the rise and it's a problem. Um, and the UK are well aware of it, the government are well aware of it, and there's um, a few initiatives um, in place to try and deal with this. If you think about um, something that's in the news a lot more and a lot more mainstream uh, is the overuse of antibiotics. Um, this is absolutely the same principle um, when it comes to cleaning and disinfectant. Um, you know, you're, you're fueling the stuff you can't kill you're fueling and it's becoming more dangerous. So how do we deal with that? Um, and again, sorry, I should have had a question mark here. Uh, probiotics, is it the future of cleaning? Question mark. Well, here we go. There's just some, some stats here to get you thinking. Um, right, so probiotics are naturally occurring, helping, helpful, sorry, non-mutative. They are the good bacteria and they are one of nature's most powerful assets. They're socially responsible. Uh, it's a socially responsible alternative to traditional chemical cleaning agents. Uh, now, when you go into a room, there's a healthy microbial balance of 80 to 90% probiotic and 10 to 20% pathogenic bacteria. Okay, so as long as that balance remains, there's no risk of infection. The problem, of course, is when the pathogenic bacteria start to overtake. Uh, so the next, actually the next point I've kind of already gone through, uh, this is the, the dangerous bacteria uh, that's left and then replicates immediately. Um, and when they replicate and they develop the resistance to cleaning chemicals, um, they become stronger and stronger. So that is called antimicrobial resistance. And antimicrobial Micro microbial resistance arises when organisms um, that cause infection, they evolve and they survive treatment like disinfectant. Um, all bacteria, whether they're harmful or helpful, they need the same thing to survive. They need food, space and oxygen. So this is where the probiotics are really clever. So they're carefully selected probiotics outcompete the harmful bacteria. So they starve them effectively, they starve them and then they become the food source for the probiotic. Uh, okay, next slide, please Colin. So I've just done a list here as well of the environmental benefits of uh, probiotics. Um, listed them all through um, you know just scan through and have a read the most important ones i think really are um, when you look at the second point completely safe for adults children animals fish and the environment they literally tick every box and um, bleach is known actually there's quite a lot um, they've done quite a lot of testing on bleach products and those people um, who have high exposure, so cleaning operatives who have high exposure to bleach of 10 years plus are much, much more likely um, to, um, to get lung disease later on in life. Um, these are absolutely completely safe, so safe for operatives. They do not contribute to AMR. And also, the other thing which is quite important here is that um, depending on what bleach you use and, 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 and the certain levels within it, um, a lot of house bleach will only actually last on a surface for an hour. You go back, you come in, you've got something nasty on your hands, you touch it, it's going to start spreading again. Um, with these probiotics, they sit on the surface um, and then they'll actually be active for up to three days, so fighting actively against the pathogen. Um, right, okay, so I'm just a little bit conscious of time. Um, if we just move on to the next slide, I've put some uh, useful sources of information there for you. Um, so for those that are thinking of 
uh, obviously going back to work soon if you can. Uh, there are government guidelines for cleaning. Um, I've put the link on there for the non-healthcare um, non settings. Um, if you want to read more about probiotics, um, then this website's great. It's called Ingenious Probiotics. Um, the guy who runs this company is a guy called Joe Flanagan. Some of you may uh, have already met Joe. He's not a Brentman Chamber member, but he does come to events um, now and again to kind of seek out people like me um, who own cleaning companies um, and kind of educate them on probiotics. He's got a wealth of information on his website and he regularly writes blogs. Um, he'll be able to tell you all of the ins and outs. Uh, I really suggest you go on there. It's really good, great read. Um, if you wanted to read a little bit more about antimicrobial resistance, and why it's so important um, then there's a link there on the UK government website um, they do have a plan in place to see AMR contained and controlled by 2040 um, and another source of just you know a lot of information um, and they have some on probiotics is uh, Public Health England um, so as we now move to the end of the presentation, uh, obviously, thank you for listening. I, I do really hope that um, some of the points raised will be helpful for you and your businesses. Um, I'd just like to say, you know, I'm, I'm available. Um, please contact me if you do have any questions. I'll be more than happy to chat through some things with you. Um, and just finally, we are going to uh, run a small competition. We're going to put... Um, a post up on Facebook about this, with what we've done with Brentwood Chamber. Um, as a business, please feel free uh, to like it and share it. And if you do that, we are gonna pick uh, one company um, and we'll do a complete free deep clean for them. So it won't cost you anything. Uh, and we'll also send out some of our little snazzy hand sanitizers. Uh, I don't know if you can see those, but they're kind of like credit card size. Um, We'll send those out to 10 businesses and you can give them out to employees. They can just carry them around outside with them. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it from me. Great. Thanks very much, Tom. Um, hopefully everyone's got your details there on the screen, but I'll just, I'll just stop sharing for a minute and uh, just remind everyone that's viewing that uh, uh, hopefully you did find the presentation interesting and informative. And uh, most importantly, if you've got any questions or if you want to clarify any points, then please do uh, feel free to hit the Q&A button and uh, I'll be happy to pass on your questions to um, Tom. But uh, in actual fact, Tom, very interesting presentation, but I've got a couple of questions myself which cropped up for me um, during the presentation, even though I had actually read the, um, the slides in advance. Um, just a couple of things which, well, first of all, the things which you did mention, my, my, my question about fog, it's obviously quite a, a detailed and complex procedure. Um, can you give us some sort of vague idea of how, how it costs, how much it costs? I mean, obviously it's difficult to depend on the size of the office, that sort of thing, but it, in relation to other sort of types of cleaning, is it, is it massively expensive? Is it, is it? Um, yes, because there is quite a lot involved. Um, you know, it is, it is quite specialist and you, you need to be trained in it. Um, mm, I think the prices will vary greatly. Um, what I would say is try to work off something like, 50 to 75 pounds, um, work off 50 pounds an hour for the deep clean initially. Um, and then with the fogging treatment, it's gonna be somewhere in the region of 150 to 200 pounds an hour. So you, you need to, obviously it, it depends how big your premises are, but maybe try to work off of those rough guidelines, but there's gonna be a whole host of prices. Um, so just, just be a little bit careful and, and research it. So if someone was having decided they wanted to go ahead and have fogging done, should, would the company, they should be able to tell them exactly how much it's going to cost before they start the procedure, would they? they oh, would yes, know how yeah. much how long it's going to take. Oh, no, absolutely. Yes, sorry. They would have worked that out. Yeah. yeah. But they'll work so. that out and, you know, they'll give you a price. Um, yeah. Right. Okay. And just to clarify regarding the, um, the probiotics, which is obviously a fascinating subject, um, you said that the bad bacteria need the food and the probiotics starve the bad bacteria is that correct yes they do yeah they starve them um so they can then obviously no longer they starve them out and then they become the food source for the good bacteria um and basically you you need to get back to that equilibrium you know that uh that 80 yeah. 90 10 20 uh yeah. in order for an infection not to occur 
Right, and the and the probiotics are a natural, naturally occurring. Yep, naturally product. occurring. Yep, from plants, sources right. of plants, okay. cells of and plants. That, and that's why they they manage to get rid of a bad bacteria, but not the good bacteria, because that's nature looking after us, basically. Is that? Indeed, it's uh, it's only us humans that over years have developed all these one stop chemicals, um, which which obviously work great to begin with, but um, we didn't quite realise the the secondary effects, um, you yeah. know, bacteria, bacterial infections, which are which are rising, and you know, I, I hope my point came across clearly that you know the link between COVID nineteen now and the fact that people are going to be disinfecting a hell of a lot more. Um, there's a real risk that you you aid the rise of superbugs because there's just simply some pathogens that are really clever and they won't die and then they replicate. Right. So um, just looking at some of the questions someone asked, some of the people have asked us, um, and this one, I guess he's alluding to the fact that the, the fogging kills the good bacteria and the bad bacteria. So the question is, do you know why some businesses are pushing fogging so much, given what you have said today? And I'm assuming he's referring to the, you know, that's about the good and the bad bacteria. Yeah, they're, they're pushing it because it's, you know, the SARS cov two. if it's, if it is in your premises, um, you know, you, you, you want to kill it and the way you do effectively kill it is by using a fogging technique and it gets everywhere that's the that's the main reason people will push it uh, the droplets are so tiny it's a very powerful mist that it creates it will spread everywhere in the room and it will also hang in the atmosphere as well so if there was if, if you knew it was infected with COVID-19 somebody came into the workplace uh, they tested positive um, you know it's going to kill anything in the atmosphere as well that might be lurking. So in effect, what you're saying is the benefits outweigh the disadvantages, the benefits of fogging outweigh the potential disadvantages from killing the good bacteria. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, I've got another question on the subject we were, you did talk about a little bit. Uh, it says, Tom, what is your opinion of the efficacy of antibacterial cleaning sprays versus bleach on surfaces? I don't like to use bleach on granite surfaces. Not sure if this is uh, an appropriate or fair question, so feel free to ignore it if it's not fair to ask you. Well, there we go. I've asked you. <laughs> I read that bit after um, I asked you. <laughs> yeah, I. Oh, that's that's a real tricky one for me to comment on. Right. There's a there's a uh, there's a whole industry out there, isn't there, that that sells all these kind of one stop shop things. I, I think you guys know where I sit on it. I think um, I think the probiotics. Um, that's that's the way forward. Uh, overuse of antibac and bleach is it's really not a good thing um yeah okay right uh coming back to fogging uh, this is an interesting question uh does fogging affect anything in the office such as for example things simple things like paperwork electrical equipment uh, uh, do you need yeah. to remove anything prior to fogging yeah th this is actually this is a really really good question um i'm pleased you asked it because it, it was on my mind how in depth do i go with it um but when somebody comes in and fogs you need to be really careful that they're using the right fogger. So um, the droplet size is what dictates if it's the right fogger or not. Um, so what you need to make absolutely sure, if you work in an office, you need to make sure they are using a fogger that releases microns between five and eight. That's really key. Anything above that, you start to get droplets and the droplets will settle on surfaces and then they would literally have to be wiped clean. Um, if you, you if they're using the right fogger, paperwork will be fine. Um, electrical equipment, that will also be fine. As long as they're not going, you know, if you've got an open plug socket, what, what we actually tend to do is, you know, you get the child safety um, that, that the plug socket covers for children. Uh, that's quite a good practice. Most companies will then go in and actually put those in the empty plug sockets. Um, but no, unless you're literally going up to the plug socket and, and blasting it, there's no problem. But it's just really key that you make sure the company's using the right fogger. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. And as you mentioned about the um, the questions to ask them in, in advance. A um, couple of other points. What about um, uh, rubbish disposal in the office? I mean, obviously, uh, is there anything different we should be doing in terms of rubbish and waste paper and, uh, and obviously kitchen waste, that sort of thing? Um, I would just make sure that you do it every night when you go back. Um, yeah, make sure that that's something that should be done every night. And maybe that, as an employer, if you if you don't have a cleaner 
you know, you don't have the luxury of having the premises cleaned every night. You just say, look, guys, do you mind just taking your bin bag out for me? I know it's not something you want to do, but just whilst, whilst we're in this situation, uh, just take your bin bag out and we'll put fresh ones in. Right, okay. Um, and also during your presentation, you mentioned about if you sit near a window, uh, open your window for ventilation, um, which then prompted me to wonder, um, how does air conditioning affect the, um, the presence of bacteria? Is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? No, um, and that's, oh God, that, that's a real rabbit hole um, that we can go down there. Um, the simple answer is, it's not a good effect. You know, it's push, it pushes around all the bad bacteria. Um, a, a good answer to that is actually, um, there's someone far more qualified to talk about that, the air conditioning, and that's Joe Flanagan. Um, and that's that website that I gave you, Ingenious Products. Um, he's got a number of, of different things actually that you can do and some of them aren't that expensive um, to tweak your air conditioning units to make sure your air is safer um, but it is it's something that's becoming a lot more topical now actually um, and, and on that website you've got a wealth of information about it. Right okay good so just a reminder if anyone else does have any questions do um, do hit the Q&A button I'm sure Tom will be happy to uh, answer them for you. I think we've answered, let me just double check. I think we've answered all the questions we've had so far, Tom. Yes, we have. So that's great. Um, it's obviously your presentation was uh, fair and uh, to the point. Um, just before we wrap things up, Tom, is there anything else you want to add? Any final sort of tips or uh, summaries? Uh, no, I think the main thing is, look, there's going to be a lot of anxious people going back to work. Um, and like I said, there'll be people that aren't so anxious, but just be mindful they really take the temperature within your household you know right um everyone's different so just find out where people are with it um put some sensible procedures in place um and just discuss how you can fine tune it and and make sure that you're creating the safest possible environment that you can right okay so as always a lot of common sense involved in these things yeah it, it's it's just common sense yeah okay brilliant well thanks very much tom uh, just a reminder of those of you who do want to uh, a couple of points if you want to get in touch with tom then uh, his email address is tom at stextremecleaning.com uh, and tom if someone wants to uh, see a copy of your slides would you be happy to um send them the copy if, if they contacted yeah. you yeah yeah absolutely yeah Okay, so the way it works with data protection now, we can't give your, de I'm just I'm talking to the viewers now, we can't give your details to Tom, but if you would like to uh, see a copy of those slides, then do send an email to Tom or contact him on Facebook or wherever, and uh, he'll be happy to send you a uh, copy of the slides. And of course, the whole presentation is being recorded and that will be on YouTube, uh, probably later on today uh, for you to view, and we'll be emailing you the details of the, uh, the um, link for the YouTube presentation. So I uh, just want to thank you very much for joining us today, Tom. It's been a real pleasure having you and uh, followed on quite neatly from the, the presentation we did before about um, safety in the office in terms of, of space and everything. Uh, I just want to tell people about the, uh, the next webinar, which is coming up. And uh, let me just share the screen for the details. Preparing for post COVID-19 with uh, Sue Potter from Spotter Talent. So uh, that's looking at how you prepare your business for post COVID and the sort of things you can be doing to uh, ensure that you, when you do uh, get up and running again, that you're benefiting as much as possible from the uh, post COVID uh, um, temp climate in the working environment or indeed uh, the pre post COVID as in terms of uh, how people are getting back to work and beginning to uh, look for uh, doing more business than they have over the past few weeks. Uh, that's Tuesday the 20th of May so next Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. with Sue Potter and one other one to mention to you just to flag up for your diaries next Friday same time as this 9.30 a.m. next Friday uh, we're joined by a couple of people from Brentwood Borough Council uh, namely the leader of the council, Chris Hossack, and the chief executive of the council, Jonathan Stevenson. Uh, Brentwood Borough Council have been very active in terms of distributing the grants on behalf of the government, uh, and they'll be able to give you the latest update, both in terms of uh, how, how they've been faring with the grants, but also, more importantly, perhaps for you, an update on what's happening in Brentwood in terms of the high street and getting back to business. So that's next Friday, and as I say, next Tuesday with Sue Potter. So 
Uh, all that remains really is for me to thank you all very much for joining us today and hope you've enjoyed the presentation and uh, enjoy your weekend. Uh, I think, is it Bank Holiday on Monday? I think it is, isn't it? Yeah, I lose track of these things. Uh, anyway, enjoy your weekend and uh, look forward to seeing you on Tuesday. Thanks very much and goodbye.